Hello everybody, namaste. I am Prajita Kori. I am a content creator from Mumbai, India, and it is my absolute pleasure to be here talking to everybody. Uh, I feel immense pride in the fact that I get to be in the same frame as someone that we've all looked up to for so long, someone who's so inspirational. Uh, so I'd like to welcome DSG Amina Mohammad. Hi, Projecta. It's wonderful to be with you. Let me just say that right from the beginning, there's so many young people out there, but having watched some of your YouTube videos, I had my life over again. I said, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. You have no clue how much that means to me. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for doing everything that you do for every little girl around the globe. Um, knowing everything that you have done, um, I wanted to ask you, was there a particular incident that triggered your interest in doing all the work that you do, especially around gender equality? Um, as I think back, I think, um, you know, I did a lot of work in the first years of my life, um, being part of design teams uh, for schools, for public buildings, for hospitals. And I remember we finished one hospital and we, we didn't have the resources to build it. Um, and I was you know, asked to go and look for those resources. And I went to the African Development Bank. Um, it was my experience in the African Development Bank and the way that they challenged me um, to what that hospital would deliver and how would we ensure that it really did um, impact people's lives. So, here we were designing a hospital that was to be functional and to take care of 200, it was a 240 bed hospital, but we didn't really think about the wider community um, and the challenges that women had to access to health. So I think the very first time that I really thought about the impact this was having on women and the lack of equality uh, to services, basic health services, which, which in, in my country at that time, Nigeria, um, we had, you know, terrible maternal mortality rates. Um, uh, so that was the first time. It was actually moving from being part of a design to looking for the resources and being interrogated about how these resources would be used to ensure that that facility um, would make a difference to the community. And in my work, finding how far from those services and from the impact um, of, of a hospital women were. And, and I think that's really what triggered, okay, I need to get you really people about this and not just about the the hardware i need to get a, i need to get in touch with the software you know we are in such a weird time right now where we're trying to get over a pandemic and there have been tremendous health and economic losses that we know of but given the way 2020 went given the pandemic i'm sure there's a lot of losses there's a lot of um um uh, crisis that has been uh, created uh, or that has happened but we aren't uh, it's not in the light yet we don't know about it yet um, how has the pandemic affected inequalities or is, how is it reversing the progress for women and girls especially I mean I'm sure a lot of these issues have not come to light yet but they will given the impact that we had last year Yes, I, I think many are coming to light already, but I mean, in 2020, we all embarked upon the decade of action for the sustainable development goals. And suddenly there was this pause, um, uh, but there were regressions. I mean, women were impacted most. Um, you, you found this in the economy, particularly in the informal economy, for which they are almost invisible. And yet they provide so much. So the informal economy was the first place that we saw women being hit in the lockdowns. We also saw girls um, impacted by education because out of school um, and a lack of um, access to, um, uh, to, to technology and the digital world. So, I mean, where everybody went online in many developed countries, this did not happen for millions of girls. Um, access to health, that was already a challenge for most women and girls. Um, but in the time of COVID, we found the competing demands uh, to try to respond to the health um, crisis um, and that also was competing with um, resources. And so we were finding, you know, vaccination programs, access to maternal health. Um, that again um, would, would exacerbate the progress that we've made um, on um, child and maternal health. Um, but I, I think other dimensions um, we didn't really understand as well, and probably this will be reflected in, in, in time to come, uh, the mental health um, issues um, around those that were really in some cases incarcerated with their abuser. Um, and in, in other cases, the stresses and strains 
um, that are put on a woman to try to, to take care of the family, um, to provide for the family, um, all in a situation um, that, that of course we had never experienced before. And so the whole issue of unpaid care work, which is, which is something that is not understood as well, but we must uh, take that if we have to take anything out of uh, the COVID um, uh, crisis and experience um, into account. Um, I think the anxiety that your young people had felt in this time when human interaction was a given and suddenly we were not there, um, even though your world of social media and interaction is there, but so much more of it is, um, is, the, is the human interaction and that being taken away, I think has caused a great deal of anxiety, um, not knowing what the future holds because uh, this is a period um, that, that, that has been so uncertain. Um, and then, you know, very many realities. Um, climate change did not pause. Uh, while the rest of the world went into lockdown, climate change continued. Um, and for that, many, uh, there has been many, many who have suffered in that, particularly young people um, and women. And, uh, and so I think, um, yes, the challenges, COVID really exacerbated, it's put more people back in poverty, um, but it, 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 has, uh, it has made us better understand um, what we have um, in order to deal with these challenges and the, with, with these um, um, extremities. That is actually what I was going to ask you next. You know, I know the dark, the times are so dark, but I, uh, I like to look at the silver lining. I'm always trying to, all of us are in these times. Um, what is the silver lining we can look up for? You know, there's got to be something that came out good out of all of what happened. Yes, I'm an optimist as well, incurable. Um, I, I'd like to sort of talk about the reality because I want people to understand that we do know um, and uh, that, we, that, that their issues um, are, on the, are on the front burner. We're not leaving anyone behind. Um, so I think what COVID has done, it has brought um, about a much better understanding um, of where these gaps are and what we need to do to leapfrog. And we can do that um, in the time of COVID. Why? Because a lot of people are much more focused now on what happens to the money. Uh, the money in the public sector, the money in the private sector, the money in your pocket, um, and how best you use that for what you need and not necessarily what you want. Um, and I think that this, is, um, this has been a big eye opener for many. For the public purse, um, without the resources and with the demand um, of populations, there's been much more attendance to governance. So there's more accountability and you can see many more protests that are coming out where young people are demanding their rights to, to very basic things, uh, but also stimulus packages that are being put together. We're having an opportunity to say we need more investments now to go green and, and we need connectivity um, so that schools um, are better connected, uh, so that health services are better serviced, uh, so the jobs and the skill sets that we need to close the digital divide. So I see lots of opportunities now where there is some resources available and they are in the response for a better recovery. I see a lot of attention given to the intergenerational transition. I think for the first time we are actually saying it's not just about ticking the box and whether youth are in the room at the table, but are they leading and are we listening and are we allowing them to shape those agenda that go forward? Because certainly the future is cities, it's young people, it's technology. And that can happen now so that in COVID, let's respond so that that build back better is about a new era. It is about a new dawn and that we don't come back to doing things the same way, that we take the opportunities of flipping the orthodoxy on anything and everything uh, to make sure we've got a much more prosperous um, and a much more safer. Um, and, and I think a world where um, we don't have to think about, um, we, we, we make history the idea that um, we have to make a special effort for women to be at the table. Okay. Uh, now, here's a question that I was most excited to ask you. Um, and I love asking this to uh, all the amazing, inspiring women that I have the pleasure of uh, talking to. You know, given that your time is spent in doing such amazing but crazy amount of work, you know, that obviously makes our world a little better every day. What is the one thing you do in your day that is not productive at all? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, it's mostly productive, I think, even in my sleep. Um, but the one thing that does happen, I walk through the door, I, I cook for myself, um, and I make the mistake of sitting in front of the TV and eating it and drinking it. And then there is this um, um, 
there's this exercise machine that's not far away that I'm supposed to get onto. Um, but then I become really unproductive. Um, and I finish and I just swing my feet up and I become a couch potato. And I do absolutely nothing except watch whatever it is that's on the screen and it's not very productive. <laughs> so yes, that is my, um, that is my two, three hours um, in the evening. And I know I have lots of emails and I have this you know, pile of files that I brought home with me. Um, but between the time that I eat and that I have this ambition to go back to the files or climb on that exercise machine, couch potato. May I just say that I'm sure everybody <laughs> listening to us right now is relating so hard. They're like, it's fine. DSG does it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, moving on to, again, a very, very um, uh, important question that we all want to know about. Um, you know, a lot of people look at you as an inspirational figure, but we want to know who inspires you. So is there like a person, is there a book, a podcast, a piece of music or art or anything that inspires you on uh, a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, and you think our festival participants should check out? Um, oh, wow. I mean, you, that, that, that's such a list of things and in each and every one of them, there will be. Let me tell you about the books. Um, I walk through bookshops and I pick up books like they're sweets on issues that I think matter. Um, and it's such a broad range. Um, and I, I think what I'm reading are the titles um, and, and trying to absorb them because they, they make a difference to whether we are speaking about the climate crisis or, or, um, or socioeconomic issues. Um, but I think what makes me, um, makes me even more uh, inspired uh, to do the work that I do are the people that I meet in some of the things that they're doing. Um, and a lot of them have just been young people. Um, whether, whether it is Hamza who is in Nigeria following the money um, and it inspires me because he is just, um, you know, fearless in doing so because he believes that he has a right to ask you where that public money is going and what impact it is making. And I remember as a minister um, thinking he's doing something that I can't do. And so that's really useful for me and, and to encourage that. But also to see while we are in Kenya doing a school feeding program. Um, and, and in that program, really seeing the difference that it made to, to children who may not get that, that meal. Um, and, and really, you know, when I went to visit it, it was less about me and they were just getting on with how cool this was to have a band and to be able to tap money into it and to have their meal. And, and to see the enthusiasm of this young girl um, who could do so many other things because she was so qualified. But what was she doing? She just looking into her community, really close up in front uh, to, to millions of children. And perhaps the last of the inspirational things that I've, I've seen more, more recently um, is when a young girl in my own home country decided that she would challenge the status quo about the age to run for office. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, we're not too young to run. Um, and then they eventually got this bill through. It took her a long time, um, but eventually they became, you know, ready to run. And I think that that's the forward thinking of it. So, you know, I, I come across people every day who maybe don't have a name, um, but they have a, they have a heart and a soul and energy and inspiration and vision that is unparalleled. And that's what inspires me every day. And I'm so fortunate to have a job that I get to meet them. That is wonderful. Thank you, DSG. This was an absolute pleasure. I'm sorry for all the fumbles that came in every now and then. I'm just That's deeply okay. nervous right now talking to you. And I, this for sure goes as one of my favorite days. Uh, uh, so thank you so much for this. And uh, you're inspiring. You're amazing. Please continue doing everything that you're doing. We all look up to you and you are wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'd say the same to you. I mean, this is where we get our inspiration. And, and this journey really is about us accompanying each other. Um, and everyone's got something to add. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this festival. You're going to be challenged um, to flip the orthodoxy, um, but that you're also going to engage individually and collectively um, for the actions that are needed uh, for the paths to, as you say, the silver lining. Uh, because yeah. that must happen. And, and uh, I just always close with Mandela, who said everything seems impossible until it's done. Exactly. That's right. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.